So 3.1 now moves into graphing more than one equation in a plane, seeing where they intersect, if they do, and what the solution looks like. The first example, we have to build the equations that we're going to work with, so let's take a look. In 2012, approximately 50 million children were enrolled in public elementary and secondary schools in the United States. There were 20 million and more students enrolled in pre-kindergarten through grade 8 than there were in grades 9 through 12. How many were enrolled at each level? So we've got two different kinds of school children, and we're going to be graphing on the xy plane, so I'm just going to use x and y. It really doesn't matter what we assign as our variables, but I'm going to let x be the number of pre-kindergarten through eighth grade. So we don't have to keep writing it down, saying it a bunch of times, we just say x number of pre-kindergarten through grade 8 students. And then I'm going to let y be the number of 9 through 12th grade. So we have those to work with. We'll be plotting. X represents kindergarten through 8th grade. Y represents high schoolers. Okay. And these are in what? In millions. The units that they reported to us as we were reading in millions, it's important to note. All right. So we need two equations, and we need them in a nice form, but let's build them first. Very first line that they gave us. 2012, we don't really care that it's in 2012. Approximately 50 million children were enrolled in both elementary and secondary schools. So the K through 8 and the 9 through 12 together were 50 million in total. So with our variables that we've defined, we can write an equation with that. The sum of the two, the kindergarten through eighth grade, and adding together with the high schoolers, together we had 50 million of them. And we're going to have a system, so I like to put the little grouping together, just to keep it neat. We have one equation, we could plot it, but we need the other, because we're looking for the intersection. So the next line, there were 20 million more students enrolled in pre-kindergarten through grade 8, then there were in grades 9 through 12. So which of those two has more students? The K through 8 or the 9 through 12? So there were 20 million more students enrolled in kindergarten through grade 8. So there are more kindergartners through 8th graders than there are high schoolers. So I know that my elementary is going to be my high schoolers plus how many more? 20 million more students were enrolled in elementary school than in high school. So we have our two to work with. But in order to graph, we like to have it in that nice y equals mx plus b form. Because then we can see the slope and the y-intercept and graph it pretty quickly. So let's take this first equation and find an equivalent form. If we want to get y alone, what's got to go? x positive, so we subtract to get rid of it. So we've got y is equal to negative x plus 50. So we know y-intercept happens at 50, slope negative 1 over 1 in a nice form. Equation 2, we want to do the same thing. We want to get y alone. In order to do that, what's got to go? Subtract 20 from both sides. So y is equal to x minus 20. It moves over the equal sign, we'll change sign. Okay, so you have a nice grid. I attempted to recreate one. It's a lot harder here than it is on the, on the whiteboard. But we have to scale this, because we have to make 50 and negative 20 fit on the picture and still have it to scale so we can see our solution. So in your case, you've got 10 grid marks uh, on the x and the y in both directions. I think in mine, I have a little bit less. So for mine, I'm going to make every tick mark be worth 10 units. Okay, and you could do every two for you could be 10 units because you can fit a little bit more. And what happens in this case? What do X and Y represent? Number of what? Number of children, of people. So we shouldn't be having negative people. So what quadrant are we going to be sticking to for the most part for our solution? the upper first quadrant, because our x value and our y value are both positive. 
Okay, so I'm going to label those, and I'm going to say every tick mark is worth 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Same story for the y-axis. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Okay. But when I look at the second equation, the y-intercept is down below in the negative. Our solution isn't going to be down there, but to graph this line, it's helpful to go down a little bit as well. So we've got negative 10, negative 20. We'll need that in order to graph. Okay, so we've got our scale. For our grid, let's go ahead and plot both of these. So the first equation, equation 1, what does it look like? The y-intercept goes through 0, 50. So I know it goes through this point. So not moving left and right at all, moving up. 50 units. And our slope tells us to move how? So the y-intercept goes through 0, 50. And the slope tells me to go down 1, over 1. But seeing that scale is going to be kind of hard. I can't move down 1, over 1 and be accurate with it. And every tick mark is worth 10. So how else could we behave according to the slope? Instead of going down 1, over 1, we could go down 10, over 10 or down 20 over 20, as long as the scale is the same. So I'm going to move from this point and move down 10 over 10, down 10 over 10, down 10 over 10, until we get there. So we've got our first equation. Connect those lines together. First equation was done. Now let's look at the second. Second equation has a y-intercept going through negative 20. Uh, 0, negative 20. So we could go and plot that point. I know it's going to go through here, even though that's not a part of my solution because we can't have negative children. And then how do we move according to our slope in this case? It's positive, up 1 over 1. So again, I could go up 10 over 10 and connect those together. Up 10 over 10, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. And you can see we have an intersection between those two lines. We have a point halfway in between both grids where they're intersecting. So specifically, at what point is this happening at? If we're going to label their intersection, there is an x and a y. The x value happens where? So I'm halfway in between 30 and 40, so my x value, 35. Now, the y value is halfway in between 10 and 20, so we're looking at 15. So what does that tell us? Our solution is 35, 15. Solution, 35, 15, where they intersect, where both of them are satisfied. So with that being true, again, what did our x values represent? What do we call them or label them as? 35 was the number of what? Children that were pre-kindergarten through grade 8. So I know there were 35, and what are our units? Million, 35 million, K through 8. I know it's pre-kindergarten, but we get the idea. And Y represented what? The number of high schoolers. So we had how many? There were 15 million high schoolers, uh, 9 through 12th grade. Okay. And how could we double check? Just running back through the info that they gave us. Approximately 50 million were enrolled in elementary and high school. So if we add the two together, do we get to 50 million? Yeah. And the other piece that they gave us, there were 20 million more students in elementary school than there were in high school. So if 15 million are in high school, 20 million more than that is 35 million. Check. We're verified. The next system is given to us. We don't have to create the equations, but we do have two to work with. And I'm going to go ahead and label them, because whenever we graph more than one equation in a plane, we want to give it a definition so we don't get confused about which one is where on the, on the graph. So I'm going to call the first one line 1, or L subscript 1, and the second one L2. That's going to be my pattern, so we don't have to write all this stuff down. We could say L1 and L2 once we've drawn the picture. So in order to graph these, we need them in what form? Y equals MX plus B, slope-intercept. So to get Y alone in our first equation, 
what do we do? We have to get rid of negative x. It's negative, so we add it to both sides to get rid of it. So y equals x plus 1. So what information do we have when we go to graph it? I know my y-intercept goes through the point, 0, 1. And my slope tells me to move how? The coefficient on the front of x is a 1. We can write it in fraction form as 1 over 1 when we graph it. It'll be easier. So we've got line 1 to work with. Line 2, in order to get y alone, what do we have to get rid of? x. It's positive, so we subtract it to move it to the other side. So y equals negative x plus 3. And in this case, this y-intercept goes through what point? 0, 3, constant on the end. And then our slope is now negative, negative 1. And again, if we want to put it into fraction form so it's easier to graph, we can always throw a whole number over 1. So let's plot these two in the same plane and see if they have an intersection. We want to solve the system. Where are they touching? So the first line has a y-intercept of 1. So 0, 1. Make the point. Then from there, how do we move according to our slope? Up 1, over 1. Up 1, over 1. So we'll go ahead and connect those lines together. So this, in this case, this was line 1. We want to be adamant to label everything so we don't get confused about what goes where. Line 2 now goes through the y-intercept, 0, 3. So we don't move left and right at all, up, 1, 2, 3. And from there, we move according to our slope, how? Down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1. We can do it as many times as we want. We really only need two points in order to connect them together. And that one was line 2. So do they have an intersection point? Yes. So we have a solution. We have a value that satisfies both of these equations at the same time. So where is that solution? At what point are they touching? So our x value to this point is 1. The y value, we have to go up 1, 2. So our solution is 1, 2. That's the only point that will satisfy both lines at the same time, because they only touch in that one place. So we have our proposed solution, but maybe my graph's not so accurate. I'm not convinced that this is my solution. What can we do? How do we check it? So we check it by plugging it back in, like we've been doing. So if I plug in 1, 2 into my first equation, my y value was 2. My x value was 1. Is 2 minus 1 equal to 1? Yep, that one's verified. But we have to satisfy both. So my y value from my point, 2. The x value that I'm adding on to it is 1. Is that really equal to 3? Yeah, it's pretty obvious in this case, but we can always check. Always plug it back in and check. So the next system that we're looking at is given to us in function notation. But again, each of these just mean y, whatever outputs. y equals negative 3x plus 5. y equals negative 3x minus 2. They're just telling us they're different equations. So again, I'm going to label these. I'm going to say the first one's line 1, second one line 2. So when we draw it, we have different labels. We could use f and g, but I just get into the habit of l1 and l2. Now, looking at these, they're already in the slope-intercept form. So what is our y-intercept of line 1? It goes through the point 0, 5. And what is its slope value? m is equal to what? Negative 3. We could put it over 1 if we need to. So when we graph it, it's easier. And then for line 2, for g, its y-intercept goes through what point? 0 negative 2, and its slope is also negative 3 over 1. So they start in different places, but they're changing at the same rate at the same time. So how are these two lines related? Before we even graph it, we know the relationship. They're going to be parallel. And parallel lines do what? They go on for forever, and they never touch because they're parallel to each other. They're changing at the same rates. 
So we won't have an intersection. And even if you're not convinced, let's just graph it really quick to show you. So line one, it goes through the point zero, 05. One, two, three, four, five. And we move according to our slope down three. One, two, three, over one. Down one, two, three, over one. So we have line one roughly on there. And the line two goes through the point zero, negative two. And we move according to the slope the same. Down one, two, three, over one. Down one, two, three, over one. So when we graph these, mine isn't really to scale, because I did it by hand. But we get the idea. They're parallel. They're not touching. So do we have a solution to this system? If I choose a value on the yellow line, I satisfy the yellow, but I don't satisfy the pink, because I'm not touching the pink. And if I pick anything on the pink line, line one, it'll be satisfied, but I'm not going to be satisfying this line at the same time, because they don't touch. So parallel lines, how many solutions do we have? None of them. We've got no solutions. And our set notation for that, again, is the circle with the line through it, the empty set. So parallel lines as a system, they don't have any solutions, because they're never touching. The last system that we're going to look at together, it's not in a nice form. I'm going to label them again, line one, line two. So when we graph it, we don't have to write all that stuff down. So let's take line one and get it into its nice form. So I've got 3y minus 2x is equal to 6. We need y alone. So what should we move first? We need this piece alone, so let's add 2x to both sides. So we'll have 3y is 2x plus 6. But we need y alone. 3 is attached to y by multiplication, so we'll divide to get rid of it. So when we divide by 3 everywhere, what results? We've got y equals 2 thirds x plus what constant? 6 divided by 3, 2. So line 1 is 2 thirds x plus 2. So my y-intercept goes through what point? 0, 2. And my slope value, rise over run, 2 thirds. So we have that one in a nice form, simplified down. Let's take line 2 and do the same. So we have negative 12y plus 8x is equal to negative 24. So we need this term alone. We'll subtract 8x from both sides. So we've got minus 8x minus 24. But we need y alone. We'll divide. And every single term needs to be divided by that negative 12. So let's reduce. We've got y is equal to what? Negative divided by negative is positive. So I've got 8 twelfths. Both of them are divisible by 4. So 8 divided by 4 is 2. And 12 divided by 4, 3. So I've got 2 thirds x. And the constant on the end, negative divided by negative is a positive. 24 divided by 12, so comparing to our first line, what do you notice about them? They're exactly the same. Okay, they looked a little bit different in the beginning. They were incognito to the same equation. But now it's really plain. Because this one, the y-intercept, same exact deal. Goes through 0, 2. And my slope, I move up 2 over 3. So graphing it is just graphing one equation, essentially. Because they're the same. So I plot my point 0, 2. Got my y-intercept, and I move according to my slope. Up 2 over 1, 2, 3. Up 2 over 1, 2, 3. And we connect those together. And that was line 1, but it's also line 2 at the same time. So if I pick any point on line 1, line 1, it's going to satisfy line 2, because it's sitting right on top of each other. Whatever I plug into this equation, it's going to work in this one, because they're exactly the same. They just are scaled in the beginning. And to prove it to you, just to prove the scale and that these are the same equations, what do we need in order to turn 3 into negative 12? What do we need to multiply by? Multiply by negative 4. And we could do that everywhere, scaled by negative 4. 
Negative 2 times negative 4 is what? Positive 8. 6 times negative 4 is negative 24. So we've just taken an equation and scaled it a little bit larger. So how many solutions and what kinds do we have here? I've got infinitely many. I could choose anything along that line, but it has to sit on that line. If I pick a point out here, it's not on my line. It's not going to be satisfied. But every single one of these points going on for forever, both directions, are going to satisfy our system. So we have infinitely many solutions. Infinitely many solutions. But they have to sit on that line. So our notation for that is a little bit weird. It's still a set since we have a whole bunch of them living inside of there. But what do these solutions look like? We need an x and a y. So it's a point. So we have a set of a bunch of points such that what has to be true? Where does it have to lie? On this line. And they're the same line, so it doesn't matter which one we choose. But we've got a set of a bunch of points, and this has to be true. 3y minus 2x has to be equal to 6 has to sit on that line in order to be a solution. Again, if I pick this point, it's not going to work for us. It doesn't satisfy the line. So we're either touching at one point, we've got one solution, they're parallel, we don't touch at all, or in this case, they're touching everywhere. So we classify each of those three cases with two different characteristics. We either had a solution or we didn't. So either they touched once or they touched everywhere or they were parallel. And then we had the case where either they were separate lines or they were exactly the same. So we break them up into those two characteristics. So whenever we have a solution to a system, we call it a consistent system. Consistent means we have solutions. So if we have no solutions, we deem it as inconsistent. Consistent means we have a solution. Inconsistent means we don't have one. Okay. Then whether we have exactly the same lines, if they're touching everywhere, or different ones, if they're parallel or they intersect maybe at one point, we characterize that as well. So when we have a solution, it's consistent. No solution, inconsistent. The type of lines that we have are the other characteristics. So if we have the same line, we say that they are dependent lines. Dependent lines are exactly the same. They might be scaled a little bit, but what one does, the other has to depend on and do exactly the same thing. But lines that are different, like a parallel or an intersecting at one point, they're independent of each other. Because this one's going this way, that one's going that way. These ones, they're going in the same directions, but they don't start in the same spot. So if we have different lines, different lines, then they are independent. So we have those two characteristics to describe the three different scenarios. So what happened in our first example? The graphs intersected one time. Intersected once. So it looked like this in whatever variation. They crossed at one point in the middle. So we had a solution because they are touching at that one point. So what kind of system are we looking at? Consistent. We have a solution, so it is a consistent system. But even more than that, are these two lines dependent on each other? Are they the same? No. So we have a consistent, independent system. And these words kind of describe and sum up what we talked about. So we, it's consistent. We have a solution. They're independent. They're not the same lines. So that was our first case. Second case, when they were parallel, what happened? They never touched. Graphs never touch. Never intersect. They were parallel. Did we have a solution? No, because what one line does, the other one isn't even close to it. So that is a inconsistent, since we have no solutions, inconsistent 
system. And are the lines the same? No. So they are independent. So without our descriptions, we know inconsistent, no solutions, independent, they weren't the same lines. The last case that we looked at, the graphs touched everywhere. Touched everywhere. Because they were exactly the same. It was just scaled up. So in that case, did we have solutions? Yes. So they are consistent. And are the lines dependent on one another? Are they the same? They are the same lines, so we have a dependent system. So consistent, do we have solutions? Inconsistent, we don't. Dependent, are they the same lines? Independent, are they different? So as you're working through the next three examples that are for you, graph them, solve them, and actually characterize the different types of systems that you work with. So the first case that you looked at, we've got two lines. I'm going to label them again. Line one, line two. In order to get y alone in line one, what did you have to move first? Whatever is hanging on, so 2x. So we've got negative 5y is negative 2x plus 10. We need y alone, so we'll divide everything by negative 5. So we've got y is now equal to what? Negative divided by negative, positive, 2 fifths, x. Positive divided by negative, it's going to be negative. 5 goes into 10 two times. So our y-intercept goes through the point, 0, negative 2. And our slope goes up to over 5, 2 fifths. Line 1, we've got it. We'll graph it in a minute. Next one, to get y alone, we have to move negative 6y, or excuse me, negative 6x. So we'll add that to both sides. We need y alone, so we'll divide by 15. And we can reduce both of these constants. So what do they break down to? 6 and 15 both share a 3 in common. 3 out of 6, we're left with 2. 3 out of 15, we're left with 5. Hopefully you can see what happened. Negative 30 divided by 15 is 2. So what happens? We got the same lines here. Same line. It's just scaled by a factor of negative 3. So when I go to graph line 1, I am graphing line 2 at the same time. But again, what happens? We go through the point 0, negative 2. We move according to the slope up to over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, so we've got line 1 and line 2 at the same time. So how many solutions do we have and what kind of system is this? We've got infinitely many, they just have to sit on the line. So we've got infinitely many solutions. They're going on for forever, in both directions. But they have to sit on the line. So our set notation, we've got a whole bunch of points, and what has to be true? They have to sit on the line 2x minus 5y equals 10. Doesn't matter which one we put in there, I usually pick the smaller numbers. So we've got infinitely many solutions. They have to sit on the line. What kind of a system is this then? Well, we had solutions, so that makes it consistent. And were the lines the same? Yes. So what one did, the other had to depend on. So it is a consistent, dependent system. The next two lines are already in the y equals mx plus b form. I'm going to label them line one, line two. And when we go to graph these, in this case, I don't have a constant on the end. So that tells me automatically I'm going through the origin. My y-intercept happens at 0, 0. And our slope value is what in this case? Coefficient on x, 1 half. Positive, going up from left to right. Line 2 is also in the nice y equals mx plus b form. So our y-intercept goes through the point 0, 3 halves, 1 and a half. We can graph it on our scale pretty decently. And we move according to our slope of negative 1 fourth. And again, whenever we have a negative on a fraction, we can either give it to the top or to the bottom. So I could write it as negative 1 over 4 or 1 over negative 4. But I can't give it to both because a negative divided by a negative positive. We need to keep the sign on there. So I'm going to go ahead and graph line one. I'm going through the origin. 
going through 0, 0. And then move according to my slope, up 1 over 2. Up 1 over 2. So we have that line. Line 1. Line 2, we go through the point 0, 1 half. So I go up 1, up half a unit. And then from there, we move according to our slope. Doesn't matter. I'm going to pick this one. So I'm going to fall one unit and run one, two, three, four. Let me connect those together. You can see that they have an intersection point right on a grid mark, which is nice. And where is that grid mark? At what point are they touching? X coordinate is two, Y coordinate, one. So we have a solution. It happens at two, one. How could we check it? plug it into both, make sure that it comes out to be true. So how do we characterize this system? We had a solution, so it is consistent. Were the lines the same? Nope, so they are independent. Consistent, independent. The last system that we have to look at, we've got our two equations. I'm going to call them line one, line two, and let's go ahead and get them into their nice form. So line one, in order to get y alone, we have to move 2x to the other side. It's negative, so we add it to both to get rid of it. We need y alone, and right now it's negative, so we could either multiply or divide by negative everywhere. All the signs will change. So we've got negative 2x, negative divide by negative, positive. All right, y-intercept goes through the point, 0, 3. We move according to our slope, down to over 1. Got the first one. For the second, it's pretty straightforward. We only have to move 2x and then y is alone. So y equals negative 2x minus 4. So my y-intercept here goes through the point 0, negative 4. And our slope, negative 2 over 1. So what about these two lines? How are they related? We have the same slope but different y-intercepts. So we know that these ones are going to be parallel. Parallel lines do what? Never touch. So we won't have a solution. We can graph it real quick. 0, 3, 1, 2, 3, and we move down 2 over 1. Got our line, what it looks like. Line 1. Line 2 goes through negative 1, 2, 3, 4. Down 2 over 1. And we get there. They're parallel. They're not touching changing at the same rate at the same time. So we don't have any solutions. No solutions. Set notation is the empty set. So what kind of a system are we looking at? We didn't have a solution, so it is inconsistent. And were the lines dependent on each other? Are they the same? No. So they were independent. No solutions, inconsistent, independent, not the same lines. So when we graph a system of two equations, one of the following three things can happen. We've got our different examples. The first one, they intersect at one point. So we have one solution. One point will make it true. And what kind of system are we looking at then? Since we have a solution, it is a consistent system. And are the lines the same? No, so that makes it independent. We could have one solution. It's consistent, independent system. In the middle, what happens? They're parallel. They don't touch anywhere. So we don't have a solution. And when we don't have a solution, it is a inconsistent. And are the lines the same? They're parallel, they're not touching, so no, they are independent. Inconsistent, no solutions, independent, they're not the same line. The last one, uh, we have the same line and they're scaled. We've got infinitely many solutions, since they're touching everywhere. Infinitely many solutions. We have solutions, so it is a consistent system. And the lines are exactly the same. They depend on one another. So it is a dependent system. 
And again, let's run through the set notation quickly for these. One solution, it's going to look like a point, x, y. No solution, it's the empty set. And then infinitely many solutions, we have a set of a bunch of points, and they have to sit on the line, whatever the line looks like. I'm going to say y equals mx plus b, if it happens to be in that form. Okay. So on the next page, try with all of the following systems below, discuss the solutions the number of solutions for each, and then classify them. We don't have to talk specifically about where the solutions are, but if you can, great, we'll mark those as well. So I'm going to start in the upper left, work our way, move to the next line, start from the left, work our way. So the upper left, the first example, we've got a vertical and a horizontal line. Where do they touch? We know where the solution is because we can see it. Happens at 3, 3. And let's classify each of these. How many solutions do we have? Just the one. Got one solution. Since we have a solution, it is a consistent solution. Are the lines the same? No, so it makes it independent. Moving to the right, still on the top line. They touch at one spot. Where does that occur? One, one, because we can see it pretty well. We've got that one solution. Since we have a solution, it is consistent. The lines are not the same, so it is independent. Moving to the right again, we have infinitely many solutions. Infinite, since they are the same line. It's lying right on top of each other. We do have solutions, so it is consistent. The lines are exactly the same, so they are dependent on each other. Jumping down to the bottom left and reading again from left to right. They intersect at the point. 4, negative 3, we can see it with our grid marks. We do have that one solution again. Since we have a solution, it is consistent. The lines are not the same, so it is independent. Jump into the middle on the bottom. Parallel lines. How many solutions? None. They're not touching at all. Having no solutions makes it inconsistent. The lines are not the same, so it is still independent. And the very last, they intersect at one point. Where does it occur? Negative 1, 3. We have that one solution. We have solutions, so it is consistent. Not the same lines, so they are independent.